Hello, welcome to a very exciting creature tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you a new force field object, which is capable of simulating wind, like what you're seeing right now. And I'm going to teach you how to author cloth on a character. So very, very exciting subject today. And so pay attention and we'll get started. OK, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start simple. We're going to start off with a dress image here I've obtained a simple dress image and you notice I've tessellated uh, the image to a bunch of triangles in the meshing mode as usual now when you're doing cloth one thing to take note is you should always remember that we need a certain number of triangles there has to be a certain amount of complexity in order for the cloth to look good okay so I recommend medium to high resolution meshes if you want to simulate cloth okay so this example is a simple dressing gown that we're going to do cloth on so once we've finished finished meshing it we're going to go to start rigging the cloth object all right so i've already put in a single root bone but it really does nothing so how do we actually create cloth out of this this image well first things first things first we're going to make the bones okay so i'm going to start off with say a bone over here and then you want a cloth to actually bend a lot which actually means you need a really really high number of bones i mean really high number like what i'm doing right now okay so i'm going to select this as the root object again and i'm going to go down the gown again so these chain of bones are essentially going to be the structure that's going to hold our cloth together and it's also going to allow the cloth to bend in many many interesting ways as you will see in a moment so i'm continuing creating these chain of bones i think i'm going to do one more chain of bones all right all the way at the outline of the object okay so that looks like a rather complicated chain of bones doesn't it all right so then we're going to weigh the bones so go to weighting mode select an appropriate radius maybe something like this and then click apply to all and then it will start auto weighting all the bones it might take a while because you have a fair number of bones so it has to solve for a rather complicated rig but oh it's done look great okay so now we're done with the, this rig setup let's start animating the cloth go to animate mode okay so here's our cloth object there's no animation okay so let's start off by actually giving some physics to the cloth object, which is the whole point of this tutorial. So what, what, do, I, what, what do we want here? We want actually the, the cloth, the, the, at least the lower part of the cloth to actually sway with the wind. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment, but first things first, we're gonna give it some physics motors, okay? So select one of the upper bones, okay? And then press Control M, select all the children. That allows you to very quickly select down the whole chain of bones, okay? And now click install motor, and we're going to pick the bend physics motor. Okay, now we're done with that. I'll pick the motion mode because we want motion. And also take note, the force field wind object that, that we're going to drive these bones on later only works in motion mode. Okay, so always remember to pick your physics mode as motion. And we're going to do the same thing again for these guys. Control M. Okay, bend physics. Okay, and then same for these guys. Bend physics. And same for these guys. Bend physics with motion. Okay, now if I play it right now, something crazy might happen. Let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> what happens? Well, because there's so many bones, the system becomes really complicated. And so it actually becomes a bit energy in, unstable. And that's what happens. You get an, uh, an explosion in the physics solver. But not to worry, we can fix this really easily by simply increasing the damping parameter. This basically allows the system to bleed energy a bit faster. So let's give it a blank damping value of say 45, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy these motor values, okay? And then I'm gonna apply them to the other motors just to make sure they all have the same values. You get a, there's also shortcuts for, the, for this, but I'm just demonstrating it through the menu system. Okay, let's see what we get now. Ah, there we go. Very nice flowy cloth, right? Okay, let's save. 
Okay, so now we have something that sort of looks like flowy cloth, but it doesn't really do anything interesting. Although you can see it sort of sags already, like what you would expect from cloth. Now for the real magic. Go to the force fields tab over here. Okay, you can see we have no force fields. We're going to add a force field, and this is going to simulate wind. And the wind is going to actually affect this entire cloth and blow it and make it sway just like natural cloth within wind. So click add field and click direction force field motor. Okay. Now you can see all these blue lines have started to appear around the gown. And these are basically the wind vectors. They're the direction of the wind as they vary over time. You see how they actually increase and decrease in magnitude. That's how, how hard the wind is blowing on the gown. Of course, nothing happens yet, right? If I play the animation, it's still the same thing. Why is that? Well, that's because we haven't actually assigned the wind to the motors. So what do we do? So click on the wind force motor and I'll click assign field. Okay, now a screen pops up and shows you all the motors that you want to assign it to. So you can see none of them are checked. So just click select all to assign it to all and click close. Okay, let's see what we get now. Oh, that's quite a bit of wind and it's a bit too strong. So let's first of all, change the angle that the wind is wind is pointing. I want to make it probably point down. Okay, so let's try a value of say negative 90. So now it's pointing downwards. We play it. It's going to pull it down, but it's still a bit too much. So let's decrease the scale of the wind. Let's set it to something much lower, like 0 0.1. Oh, there you go. Let's set it to something even lower. Okay, so now you can see it sort of swaying in the wind slightly. Okay, now we can, we can actually make the wind have a higher angle variance that is it actually points in in much more different directions right now i can see the wind mostly points in the same direction right it's all pointing sort of in a 90 degrees uh, downwards but it's still sort of mostly grouped in the same direction so we can increase the angle delta to say 70 degrees let's see what we get ah there you go much nice nice sway motion because the wind vectors are more randomly spread throughout the scene I'll play that again to show you what it means. Okay. And here's a couple of knobs you can play with actually. Now I can actually change the frequency of the wind. So if I up it to say 50, oh, so you get a much more jittery force. <laughs> so if I down it to five, you get a more swaying, natural swaying wind, right? And you can also change how the scale the scale of the wind changes right now it's at 10 the frequency is at 10 so if i up it to say 50 right you actually change it so quickly it doesn't change it that much but if i take it down say 10 again you'll see it bob up and down you can see that slight jiggly motion right so by tweaking these different parameters in the wind you can get nice sway nice flowy swaying cloth now what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back to the bones and I'm going to actually going to tweak the stiffness of the bones to make them sway a bit less. Okay. So I'm going to up it to 80. All right. And again, I'm going to copy the settings on the bones. It's just control shift D and I'm going to apply them control shift A to the different motors that allows me to really quickly copy them over. So let's wait. Let's see what we get now. Okay, so now we get a slightly more sway kind of motion and, and you can you notice it's it's a bit stiffer now, right? It bends a bit less. So you can change the bending parameters on your cloth object and that will allow you to change the material properties of your cloth. Okay. And of course, if I reduce the angle delta, say to 20 degrees, you can see it's swaying less now because the angle vari angular variation of the wind is only by 20 degrees, right? And I can obviously change the wind angle to let's say 60 degrees. So it's gonna actually go upwards this way by 60. So it's gonna blow up, <laughs> looks kind of funny. But anyway, you get the idea. So this is a tutorial on how to author the cloth objects and use wind to easily sway them naturally like how you would in on a real character i hope you have fun with this because it's a very powerful feature and allows you to add, add cloth onto a character very very easily 
without having to manually animate, which would be very tedious and it would be very difficult to get the details out of something like a very complicated system like cloth. And so with a bit more finesse, you can actually take it to, to the next level, like in this character over here, where we have different sets of cloth and different force fields affecting different parts of the motors. Different motors are affected by different forces, wind forces, and you can actually get some really realistic looking cloth on a 2D character very naturally and very, very quickly, I might add. So here's how you do it in Creature. You basically use the force field object with a bunch of bone, change apply, bone, bone chains applied to bend physics motors, and they will naturally sway like cloth in the wind. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Have fun animating.